basic question on the second statistics quiz. So what the question is asking us is scores on the Welchler Adult Intelligence Scale or Standard IQ test for the 20 to 34 age group are approximately normally distributed with a mean at 110 and a standard deviation at 25. So the first step in solving any word problem is picking out what is most important. So the first thing that I noticed is that the scores in this um, example are approximately normally distributed, which means that you're going to get a graph that looks like your standard bell curve, very symmetric, um, one, one mound, very even. Um, second thing you should notice is that your mean is centered at 110. Uh, the mean is the average value of all the data points on your graph. And standard deviation is 25. So the standard deviation is a measure of basically how spread out a data set is. You could also think of this number as the square root of the variance. So if we were to go ahead and look at this on a graph, it would look something like this. We know that with an approximately normal graph, it looks just like this bell curve, and then the mean and the median are always located in the center. So I leveled that here, 110. And then the standard deviation is always taken in relation to the mean. So you see every 25 intervals is another standard deviation. So 135 for 25 above the mean and 85 for 25 below the mean. The last basic um, piece of knowledge that you need to know before going on is that under this distribution curve, the entire area is equal to 1. Now knowing all this information, we should be more than ready to move on to part A, which says... What percent of people aged 20 to 34 have IQ scores above 100? So in order to solve this, we're actually going to have to take something called a z-score or standardized score. The equation for z-score is given here. It's your given value minus your mean divided by standard deviation. It gives you z. So if we plug in what we know, our given value or x will be 100 minus our mean of 110 divided by a standard deviation of 25. And if you plug this into your calculator, you should get negative 0.4. So what do we do with this negative 0.4 z-score? So if you look on the inside cover of your statistics textbook, it gives you a diagram of basically what the z-score represents. Um, the z-score helps you figure out the area up to your given value, which in our case was 100. So what we do is we plug the point 4 into this table, so it's right here, and we find the corresponding area, point 0.3446. So if we were to look at a graph, what that is basically telling us is that the area up to our given value of 100 right in here is equal to point three four four six. But part A is asking for what percent of people have scores above 100. And so far, we've only found the area below. But it's a really simple fix, knowing that our area under our distribution curve is equal to 1. So all we'll have to do is take our entire area, which is 1, and subtract point three. Four, four, six. This should give you an answer of 0.6554. So what that is basically saying is 0.6554 of 1 or 65.54 percent. And that is your final answer. 65.54% of the IQ scores are above 100. So just a quick recap of how we did this. We took the z-score of our given value, which was negative 0.4. We plugged that into the table, and we're given the area of this distribution curve from 0 to 100, our given value. We took that area and subtracted it from the total area, which is 1, which gave us 0.6554, and we turned that into a percent, 
And that was our answer. I just tackled part A and it's time to move on to part B. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the most important information we found on the basic question and just put it on a little guide right here so we have more space to work. All right, so part B asks us what percent of scores are above 150. So we're going to use a very similar process that we used in part A, and we're going to take the z-score again. So we take our given value, 150, subtract the mean, 110, and then divide by the standard deviation of 25. This gives us a z-score of 1.6. We plug this 1.6 into our table. Go ahead and look for it. It's right here. The corresponding value is 0.9452. When we go ahead and look at that on our graph again, we'll see that the area all the way up to 150 is equal to 0.9452. Again, this area is not what we're looking for because we want above 150. So we'll have to do the same thing we did in the last problem and subtract this from our entire area under the curve, which we should remember to be 1. So if we do that, we have 1 minus 0.9452. That gives us 0.0548. So, which is basically saying 0 0.0548 of 1 or 5.48%. And that again is your final answer. So 5.48% of scores are above 150. All right, we tackled part B. Now on to part C. C asks how high an IQ score is needed to be in the highest 25%. As you can see, I reworded this to say the 75th percentile, or 75%. First thing you should notice about part C is that we're actually beginning with a percent, not a given value. So for this problem, we're going to have to work backwards. So it's asking for basically 75% of the distribution curve, or 75% of 1. So we know that to be equal to 0.75. We have to do from here is find 0.75 on our table and figure out the corresponding z-score. So if you go ahead and look over here, 0.7517 is approximately 0.68. We'll use that equation that we used before of our given value minus the mean over standard deviation. This time we don't know x, so we're going to just leave it. x minus the mean of 110 all over the standard deviation of 25 equals that z-score we just got off our table, 0.68. Now we just solve for x, so we times both sides by 25. That gives us x minus 110 equals 17, and then x equals 127. And 127 is your final answer. So in order to score in the highest 25% or the 75th percentile, you must score at least 127 on the IQ test. Just a quick recap of how we did this. We took the 75%, turned it into a proportion, plugged that into our table, and got a z-score of 0.68. And from there, we solved backwards using the equation we used in point A and B, and that gave us an x-value of 127. And that completes question 1.